right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Aaron Fragnito back with another episode of the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. And we have an amazing guest today. We have past NFL player, entrepreneur, hotel creator, and, and a tech uh, expert, Vaughn Davis. How are we doing today, Vaughn? Pretty good, Aaron. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. This is uh, an exciting podcast. Couldn't wait. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I was so inspired when I met you there at the Opal event uh, a few months ago. Great time, and uh, you are a busy man. You're doing a lot of things. Uh, as an entrepreneur myself, I thought I had a lot on my plate. Uh, boy, oh boy, you got me beat there though. And uh, just really wanted to learn more about everything you're doing and uh, the AI tech and the hospitality industry as well. But let's first start with a little bit of what you're doing uh, as the managing director of Dream Hollywood and, and kind of tell your story, if you can, of kind of how you got here today. Yeah. Um, so I'm currently the managing director for Dream Hollywood, um, which is one of our flagship properties here on the West Coast. And uh, what we wanted to do with this hotel in particular is create unique experiences to help drive revenue, of course, but more so change the game in the hospitality industry. Like we're hyper focused on new verticals, new opportunities, new experiences, all tied into the five senses of the guest experience and the unique guest journey that we've built here and the service culture that we've deployed. Um, but for the most part, it's just about making sure the hotel is vibrant, alive, generating revenue um, on a top line level that they make the owners and the partners happy, as well as working very closely with our uh, prestigious partners with the Tao Group um, for Tao, Beauty and Essex, Highlight Room, uh, which are some of the venues that we have here on property. Wow. Wow. Now, how did you get started, though, in this space? This is a pretty a uh, unique uh, position and, and, and space to be. Uh, kind of tell us a little more about your background, your story, how you got here. Yeah, so I actually, funny story, um, I graduated with a political science degree and I was pre-law. Uh, mm. Felt as though, you know, law school was in my future and did a phenomenal job on on um, my entry exams. and But I made a decision that I didn't want to take that approach and enter into the the, the, the law space. Um, for me, it was about how can I be as impactful to the world and others um, on a mass scale to help develop future leaders of industry, the, the hospitality industry in particular, or any other industry. And I've, I've been blessed enough to have the opportunity to mentor quite a few people that have done uh, phenomenal things in their careers. So, that was the reason I chose this industry. Um, I was still acting and modeling at the time. Uh, I was, you know, in some really big TV shows and movies and did a lot of campaigns and walked in New York City Fashion Week. And, you know, for me, it was, okay, what do you do with the downtime, right? I have this degree, but I'm doing really well in, in, in this career path with acting and modeling. Um, how can I find something in between that can just in case this doesn't work out and then the NFL doesn't work out, what can I fall back on based on that degree? And a few of my friends who are um, actors and models, they explained the hotel industry uh, is one of those that offers the flexibility to allow you to still go on castings, um, still go on shoot, et cetera. And uh, I, I applied online for the standard in downtown New York City. I went for the interview, um, nailed the interview, got the job offer uh, subsequently after for a front desk agent role. But uh, after the interview, and you know, you always carry a few resumes with you. I decided I'd stop into the Gansavort meatpacking. Mm. Um, and I, I walked in and I handed the front desk agent my resume and said, it, it'd, be, I'd be on, it'd be great if you'd be able to pass this on to the director of human resources. And she immediately goes, wait, right there. Don't move. <laughs> he picks up the phone, calls the director of human resources. He runs downstairs from his office, literally within two minutes was there. Um, and a nice little introduction. And he said, yeah, we would love to interview you for the front desk position wow. at our new hotel, which is Gansworth Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that started the process. Of course, I went to the interview. Um, and then connecting with the general manager at the time, who is still a mentor to me to this day and a good friend, uh, he says, you're great. We love everything about you. Uh, we don't have a front desk position open, 
but we want you to be a bellman. <laughs> I want you to be a, man- a manager in training and I'll train you and teach you to do everything I learned. Wow. And, you know, coming from my background, um, with my family, uh, being from South America and, and understanding the values of, of a guy in his household, you're either mm-hmm. a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, or you might as well not come home. Right. <laughs> so, so I, uh, I pushed back humbly in the interview and I said, you know, I, I really appreciate the opportunity, but here are all my accolades. Here's what I've done. Here is, uh, what degree I have. And I went through an entire process of trying to convince this gentleman that he should open up that front desk agent position for me and make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, that's all great. Yep. We read your resume. We want you as a bellman. Do you want the job? And I was like, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and I took the opportunity and I, and I do not regret it whatsoever. Um, the standard is a phenomenal brand. That would have been a great, a chance for me to get exposure into the industry in a similar fashion, which I did. But um, I think it's really important to align yourself with like-minded mentors um, that will, they'll call you out. They'll mm-hmm. call you out. They'll hold you accountable. They'll help you grow. They'll get you better. They'll give you all the information um, that's necessary to help you develop. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I align myself with a good one. And um, he started a very accelerated program with me as a Bellman manager in training uh, wow. where, yeah, where I learned every aspect of the hotel industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then subsequently started receiving, you know, a lot of opportunities for growth within, within the industry. I think it was after six months I was offered an assistant front office manager position. And I told them, no, mm. I said, I, I don't, I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm still acting in modeling and, you know, I'm making a lot of money here as a Bellman and I'm learning a lot in this role. It gives me tremendous autonomy right. um, to traverse throughout the property and connect with the director of engineering, the director of revenue, the director of sales and marketing, director of finance, the general manager, or tell me I could talk to anyone. And that was kind of the approach for me to learn exponentially, right? Um, I always ask questions. I always pick brains. I just want to get better every day. You know, that 1% better every day motto mm. holds true for me. And and I was able to utilize that position and that opportunity to connect with everyone to learn and ask questions mm-hmm. where they shared, you know, star reports, p ls um, the process for sales and marketing, doing site tours and connecting with prospective clients. And it right. all helped me to become uh, more of a well-rounded operator mm-hmm. because, you know, four to five years later, he actually explained why he did it. It was the way he learned. Mm-hmm. And being able to learn from the ground up, right, gives me the ability to understand how the entire operation flows and works. Right. Um, and that's how we build programs. That's how we build systems. That's how we create new experiences it's, it's through that, that wealth of knowledge mm-hmm. about every single job classification in the hotel, every department mm-hmm. that, that really supports us in making those refined decisions. Um, but yeah, from there, first to the ranks very quickly. Um, I was a, Bell Captain Manager in Training the following year, we had an opportunity, the same group of individuals, the leaders, were offered a position with Dream Hotel Group. So we started with Gansboro Park Avenue. That's all uh, old Ritz-Carlton, Four Seasons, you know, that white glove, five-star kind of um, service culture that was ingrained in me. So a lot of the leaders worked in that environment. So they brought a very similar system to the Mm -hmm. Gansboro Park Avenue. Um, and that was a, a marquee property for quite some time. I mean, we had everyone there and our rates were easily north of $800 per night. Um, but then we had the dream group come knocking on the door and uh, my mentor said, hey, man, I want you to come. And mm. I want you to come and be a manager. And I was like, that's amazing. Uh, let's do it. So yeah. we worked together to tailor a role for me that would still give me the flexibility and the autonomy because I was still at the height of my modeling and acting career, which started at the age of 13, by the way, mm. um, that I didn't want to give that up. I, it paid for my wedding. That's an example. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I did a Hugo Boss campaign that paid for my entire wedding. Uh, we had some family members chip in as well, but right. yeah, for the most part, the bulk of the bill was covered by a Hugo Boss campaign. 
Yeah. It's huge. And that, Thanks, your boss. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a hard industry to make it in. You know, I mean, it's probably harder yeah. than the hotel industry, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's, it's similar to all of the other, you know, uh, marquee entertainment um, industry roles, right? And I, I throw sports into that hat as well. You know, like the NFL, the 1% of the 1% make it. Yeah. Um, and the same goes for acting and modeling. It's very difficult to break through. I was I was blessed to have guys like Tyson Beckford as a mentor that allowed me to 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 run around in his network and connect with individuals that helped him get to where he was. And he actually mm. paved the way for me mm. on the runway, right? You're talking six feet tall, two hundred and fifteen pounds. That's yeah. not that's not your usual prototypical runway model. Right. Uh, but Tyson opened that door and I'm forever grateful and and Thankfully, you look across the, um, the the modeling industry and its evolution, you're seeing more and more uh, models that, that, that have a similar makeup walking down the runway and doing some of these high fashion shoots. Um, so, you know, that was why I made that decision for Dream Downtown. And then when I went over to Dream Downtown as a bell captain, still manager in training, I, I just deployed the same strategy that I had at the Kansas board of just right. learning, 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 learning. I set myself up with all of um, the C-suite leaders and the executive committee to make sure I had biweekly meetings and I would constantly pick their brain. I interface with them on a regular basis mm -hmm. just to understand, you know, how I can get better, how I can grow, how I can learn this industry holistically, even down to our food and beverage partners. You know, one of my other mentors is Andrew Goldberg, um, and he works for Tau Group. He, he's one of the partners um, and is a, is a major deal. Uh, everything related to the, the guest experience, the VIP services, the execution of bottle service, the management of the staff team, the expenses, that's Andrew. Andrew and um, another individual, and I like dropping names because, um, especially in this circumstance, I should say, otherwise right. I don't. Uh -huh. But when when flowers are due, you know, I will say names of individuals that really impacted me positively, to uh -huh. help me grow in my career. And I'm Anthony Cicerello. Anthony Cicerello is another one. Um, and he was, uh, I think, CFO of Tau Group for quite yeah. some time. He taught me about how to manage your expenses in food and beverage. Um, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, to your to your main question, how I got to dream Hollywood. Um, mm -hmm. So from there, Bell Captain Manager in training, and I think it was about a year um, and six months later, I finally succumbed to the pressures of taking a promotion and after saying no on uh, the countless, countless opportunities. Um, I, I took the up the the job of a guest service manager focused directly on the guest experience um, mm -hmm. that still gave me the autonomy to do what I was doing as a bell captain, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. And then seven months later, I became a director of guest services, being prepared to be the general manager of the hotel mm -hmm. um, and or of some of the other projects that were in the pipeline that were mm -hmm. going to open you know, relatively soon. Right. Um, and at 27, I felt like I was ready, but I wanted to take you know a deeper dive into learning outside of the silo that I learned into. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I didn't just want to learn from one silo. I said, okay, maybe there's another group of individuals that can help me get to the next level. I appreciated everything my mentorship group did within Dream Hotel Group, love them to death, their family, in, yeah. in my mind, my heart. Um, but I also wanted to learn from some other individuals, you mm -hmm. know, and that's when I was able to um, shift over to the two roads and I opened nine hotels with two roads and worked. Um, primarily at Hotel 50 Bowery as a director of front office where I was learning how to now be a well-rounded general manager and operator. Right. Um, and, then, you know, if you look up that team, that's Tom Larson, that's Jorge Trevino, um, that's Jamie Sabatier, Teresa de la Grana, I mean, Dan Gordon. These are legends in the game that um, fed into me and, and taught me more about how to be a better leader, how to deploy... Um, you know, all the high EQ principles, mm -hmm. um, how to recruit, how to maintain your standards and how to execute, you know, and uh, they also allowed me to open hotels and be on task force. Right. So that was a whole other learning journey that happened there. Sure. Um, and then I think it was now after being director of an office, I was then a director of rooms and then hotel manager and then the general manager. Right. And then I had a tough decision to make because I received some phone calls and, you know, uh, 
Dream Hotel Group has a a very very sacred place in my heart. I help mm -hmm. open Dream Downtown, which mm -hmm. is our, with our flagship in New York, and mm -hmm. a lot of the the service culture, the guest journey, the the UX as we call it in the tech world. We yeah. built that hotel and then right. scaled it to all of our other properties. So when that call came in, no brainer. I get to move to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I get to live in LA. I get <laughs> sunshine pretty much year round. <laughs> um, and it's a brand that I, I have, you know, tons of institutional knowledge and experience with. Sure. So for me, it was like a no brainer. This hotel is gorgeous. And I wanted this hotel. Anyway, even mm -hmm. before the world knew that it was in the pipeline, I knew about it and I was pretty excited mm -hmm. at the opportunity to operate it. Um, so I came as general manager, um, had the opportunity to become the managing director, uh, and, and we launched our own hotel management company called Relevant Hospitality, uh, wow. which I work very closely with the partners to oversee, and we, we own and manage our own hotel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is, that's, uh, that's a blessing, man. That is absolutely amazing such an exciting new journey that we're on here at people's capital group we help you invest in real estate build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the northern new jersey market we want to show you how owning real estate is attainable even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate now we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth so find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com. Wow. So you're the managing director at uh, the at one hotel here at uh, Dream Hollywood, but then you also right. have a uh, hotel management company that manages other hotels in addition to that? Yeah. So currently right now we have around 20 in the pipeline um, that we're in active discussions mm -hmm. uh, with owners about all around the world. Wow. Um, and we also manage Mother Wolf, which is the hottest restaurant here in Los Angeles. Uh, wow. Six month waiting list, and you name a person, they're mm. there. I mean, mm. I was just there last night. The food is just incredible, mm. just perfection. Um, mm -hmm. and, and my hat goes off to the team at Mother Wolf um, mm. for everything that they've done to launch the brand and then keep it stabilized and keep it at the forefront of the mind of everyone in the market and outside of the market. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also manage Citizen News, which is a 10,000 square foot event space uh, right around the corner from the hotel. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's that's a long story, Vaughn. A lot to dig into there. Um, one of my questions right off the bat is uh, just to understand the timeline. So you kind of started as a teenager and, you know, really 13, you know, preteen almost uh, as an actor model. Um, that's an interesting space to start in at that at that age it must have been tough. yeah yeah i'll tell you that was that was that was pretty fascinating i was just a, i was an athlete right mm -hmm. so yeah. a, stu a student athlete to be exact i won the president's award in sixth grade which as you know it's like top two percent uh performers in the country get that award so i got a nice certificate from bill clinton and a pin Oh, which I cool. wish I could still find my president's award pin because I had no idea how big of a deal it was back then. <laughs> so now when I have my own, pen? Oh, no. I, it, it's somewhere in a box in my mom's garage in, in New York. I'm pretty uh, sure. Um, uh, but I need to go find that pin and I need to wear that pin on a daily basis because I had no idea how big of a deal that was. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and I was also IT before IT started in elementary mm -hmm. school. I was barely in class in elementary school, man. When I first moved to this country at eight years old, I would skip two grades. And uh, my teachers would constantly pull me out of class to come and fix the computers. And then the Macs came on board. So I'd have to fix Macs and teach all of the teachers how to use the new technology right. uh, that was permeating the space. But yeah, no, I was, I was in high school at the time in Manhattan at uh, Washington Irving High School. I was playing baseball and basketball on the varsity team and I was just walking to the train station after school one day and after practice one day and um a gentleman approached me and was like you're perfect I was, mm. and I was like okay mm -hmm. thanks sir mm. like no <laughs> you're perfect I would love to photograph you <laughs> I was like how about no uh, I'm a teenager. And <laughs> I'm gonna keep and I'm gonna keep walking. Yeah. And he goes, no, 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 no. I'm a photographer. I'm this and that. Um, so that kind of started the process 
uh, because from there, uh, one of my good friends, his name was Duncan Nutter, and he had his own reality TV show. They were even on Oprah. His dad also had identified me as, you know, the next whatever they thought I was. Mm -hmm. And it was Tom, the person that discovered Tom Cruise wow. that I met with first. Um, and she presented a contract to me. And uh, thankfully, I had uh, some lawyers in the family that reviewed that contract and said, don't sign that. She'll own you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. But the same photographer gentleman connected me to another person who I then, who, you know, presented a, an inequitable contract. Mm -hmm. So I signed it and that launched my career. Um, one of the first, one of the first things I did was a showcase for, um, Sean John, where I modeled for, for Diddy. Oh, cool. And, wow. and he, he was, he was part of the casting director process. Yeah. And then the next one I did was Rock Aware, and that was with Jay Z. And so you did all comes, oh my god, it all comes full circle though, right? Because yeah. now I'm still connected to those individuals, but I met them eons ago right. in a completely different industry, completely different world, and built a mm -hmm. rapport and a relationship with them then. Mm -hmm. So you know, now as we discussed, um, some of my my close friends getting involved in investing in hotels, you know, mm -hmm. it's just so funny to see how things come full circle. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. That's interesting. OK. And then how did you have time to play in the NFL and also keep modeling? That must have been really difficult, right? Doesn't that take up like all well, your time? Well, you know, uh, the NFL is a business. So mm -hmm. one day you're in the roster, the next day you're not. <laughs> sure. So for, for some of us guys that were on practice squads and, mm -hmm. and lived that free agent life that wasn't, um, you know, a Randy Moss or... Mm -hmm. I'll use a more recent um, example, a Justin Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting life. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that free agent life was one of the it was one of the most challenging times for me because you're just waiting for a phone call, and right. you and you and your agents are doing everything possible to get you new opportunities. I mean, I ran a four two seven forty two times for a couple of teams and still didn't get a long term contract. Right. Mm. So that's to kind of give you an idea of how difficult it is to a get into the NFL and stay in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Those mm -hmm. guys are the best of the best in the universe, man. They mm -hmm. are elite athletes. Right. And um yeah, so that's how you get a little free time, man. You get cut. <laughs> well, it sounds like uh you're uh, arguably, you know, destined to be a more of a an entrepreneur and a businessman, I think that was just a, a stage in your career, of course, you know, and also professional athletics, you know, really it, it is a decade at best, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a tough business to be in. Right. And, um, but that's amazing. So let's break into, uh, we've taken a lot of time here, but let's talk briefly about the tech and the hospitality space. I know you're a big uh, proponent of AI and kind of implementing that tech in your hotels and you were talking to me when we first met about kind of where the space is going. And uh, so just talking about like some of the AI you see, you know, being available right now and even in the near future in the hotel space and like what our experience might be like at one of your uh, hotels with that. Yeah, I, I think um, we've all seen the proliferation of AI um, and the exponential growth Um rate of the technology since it has become you know available for public consumption there's over a thousand easily over a thousand different ais out there right now today that you can access and then as we know ai also has the ability to self-replicate as well so mm -hmm. you know uh, that's my guess is there's a lot more ais out there than we're aware of mm -hmm. but for for us here at, at dream hollywood uh we're mostly utilizing chat gpt um, and it's from anything to business mix analysis, um, p &L analysis, uh, potential future projects um, in the pipeline analysis, uh, SWOT analysis, you name it. We're using this thing to create deck, um, even uh, create strategic responses to some of the challenging questions that might arise from some of our hotel guests when we communicate with them, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's deeply embedded in everything we do. All of our leaders use it. Uh, a lot of our um, mid-level managers use it as well to help them in their day-to-day -day path. I mean, my director of engineering utilized it the other day to create an SOP, and it did it 
in like three seconds. Um, wow. And what we're, yeah. And that's what piece of standard operating procedure for, for the audience, just in case. Yeah. But, but what we're finding is that the Pareto principle still holds true. Yeah. Um, 80% of the ideas that chat GPT provides to us, if we ask it to do something, we would have thought of ourselves. But then we found that there's a 20% of it that it recommends that we had no idea. Wow. We're like, whoa, that's amazing. Because you have to think of the data set it's pulling from, right? It's pulling from a wealth of knowledge across the entire world. Mm -hmm. So whatever a director of engineering might be doing in Istanbul or in Chile, right, or New York in LA, then we ask it a question, it's pulling from that wide um, and robust data set to give us a strategic answer that, that help us significantly here at the property. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, I really don't utilize ChatGP that much. Uh, I've tried to log on a couple of times. I get put on hold and I guess uh, maybe I'm like old school. I, I don't know. I, I guess uh, just like kind of using my own brain to solve problems, but that's really not a, cre you know, a, a good way to delegate um, as well. So I guess I'll look more into chat GP. Did you say you could, you create your pitch decks with chat GP? Yeah, you can use chat GPT to create pitch decks. There's also another one called slides. Uh, you could use that one. There's, there's tons of AIs out there that create decks. They can create decks. They can create websites. Um, we even use chat GPT for programming for new hotel projects. Oh. um ideas uh, based on that market that we're not you know we might not be mostly familiar with and it will it will spit out some really remarkable suggestions wow i was going to yeah. use it just to come up with better uh social media posts that you know yeah i mean that's i use it for that as well you can use it um to analyze your, your social media and your digital marketing strategy um it can you can ask it to you know write the post for you the caption right. of the post, and you can say to it, I would like to see in, increased followers, um, improved or increased KPIs like engagement, um, shares, uh, comments, whatever it is you want, you tell it, and it will tell you, here's the answer, use this, and it explains why it created the caption it created. Hmm. So fine. It's absolutely remarkable. But, you know, this as much as it may seem new to the majority of the world, this technology has been alive for quite some time. Um, just not, yeah, just not mostly available for public consumption. And then you also have to think like there's, there's narrow AI, there's general AI, and then there's super AI, right? So we've been exposed to forms of narrow AI for a long time, right? Your chatbot that you're utilizing, that's narrow AI. That's like entry level um, AI. But we also, uh, during, the Coachella pop-up uh, for Desert Dream, we had partnered with a company called 8Lab. Um, and they have an AI that's a customer service AI. It, it's, it works like your, your guest experience team would. Um, and you would be able to interface with it through a chat platform where you would ask it, okay, what time is the Metro Booming show and at what stage will it be on? And it would respond, what time the Metro Booming show is and the stage it's on. How can we order food to our tent? Oh, response. What time um, will the, the massage bar be open? Because we had this whole, we had programming set up throughout the entire campus mm -hmm. or grounds for Coachella. And yep. it's certain times in which, you know, you can go get a massage, you can get Reiki healing, um, you can get a, a hit class, you can get a facial, whatever it is you wanted to do. So we had a programming calendar for all of the attendees and um, they utilize the app to communicate and find out, you know, questions that you would usually have to find someone on the grounds to find, to ask, right? Because there's no room phones in the desert, right? <laughs> so so it's better than Google, you're saying? Yeah, it is, it is, it is. Um, it's interesting that you asked that question. I'm, I don't think I've shared this publicly, but uh, you're gonna see a shift in um, the utilization of Google uh, with the emergence of this new technology. Uh, I've shifted away from Google completely, especially when Chat GPT plug into the in to the internet was working. Right, I think they put it on pause for a little, but at some point in the past, they had a plugin that would give you access to the entire internet's knowledge. Wow. 
Wow, we. I'll tell you, this, I feel like AI. Like it's it. I'm I'm almost I'm 36 and I feel like old compared to the stuff you seem to be engaging with it very nicely um and uh, I can tell the AI I can tell the chat bots like on Facebook that respond to my post it's really annoying uh and, and LinkedIn and things I'm pretty sure half the people that follow me or are friends with me on Facebook are just bots um and uh so it's just I, it's I'm not always sure like who's a bot who's not um, but I guess uh, you know if you can't beat them join them um, and it just seems like uh, these the chat GP it's like um, you pretty much have to be utilizing it to keep up with your competitors if they're using it as well you know, it seems like that's the case yeah I, I mean it's like any new emerging technology right when your smartphone came out initially you you weren't the most comfortable utilizing a phone without buttons, right? Right, right. Um, but, you know, here's the way the process works uh, from a computer science uh, standpoint. I was a computer science major at one point. I told you I was IT before IT began, so I'm well-versed in that space. I learned how to code at a very young age. Um, so as a, as a programmer, um, a developer, an engineer, systems architect, we usually have an understanding of human psychology and neuroscience, mm. right? Life sciences, you name it. We know your brain. Mm -hmm. So when we when we create these products, not just apps, but these products, uh, these mobile devices, whatever it is, computers, laptops, iPad, whatever we create, it comes from a first principle, uh, B, neuroscience, human psychology, and understanding how the brain works, right? Like how how can we um, embrace the prefrontal cortex, right? Like how do we get that area of the brain firing so they can mm -hmm. get hooked to this product? Um, and there've been some some really great podcasts out there and and conversations and panels with guys like Chamath Polyhapatia, um, and who who would give you some insight into their process at Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like they needed you. To use their app more. So how mm -hmm. do you get them to use your app more? So then you have notifications, and then there's the status bar, and then there's the likes, and then the comments, and all of that um, is a social uh, validation feedback loop um, right. that ties into the understanding of your brain and how we're able to create items for you to easily utilize and program you to be able to understand how it works quickly. Like everything we create, that's what's behind it because we need your engagement mm -hmm. in this app, in this product. Uh, because at the end of the day, the shareholders generally want to see how many subscribe, how many, how many new subscriptions do you have, how many yeah. new users do you have, mm -hmm. um, and that's why those apps are created in a way that that makes a easy for you to adopt, learn, use, and mm -hmm. b they're they're addictive. Right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So so I say that to say this. The digital divide was already a, a massive, wide, blaring gap, right? It was pretty much a black hole already before AI. Right. Now with AI and how fast it grows. Right. And which has been doing it at an exponential rate. Um, so fast that every day I feel like 10 to 20 new features have been unlocked with AI. So you have to stay abreast. You have to constantly engage, constantly utilize Train your YouTube algorithm so that you are only getting AI news. Train your Instagram algo. <laughs> Train your TikTok algo, which are all forms of AI, by the way, those algos. Right, right. Um, Train yeah, your AI and, to send you more AI information, basically. Correct. Because yeah. that's the only way you're going to learn about all of the massive leaps that are happening in the space. I'm talking, there's some stuff out there right now that's happening, man. You would not even believe it. So... I always uh, caution everyone, um, this technology is here to stay. Uh, it's only going to get better at a mm. very rapid rate, extremely rapid rate. So I would recommend you just learn how to use it. Learn get on how to board, use it. get left behind pretty much. Right? And, and, it, and you're not going to just get left behind like you got left behind with your BlackBerry, right? Mm. No, you're going to get, you're going to get left behind. You'll be in the Stone Age. You're going to be trying to figure out how to start a fire. <laughs> that, that's the level 
that's why I call it a black hole, right? It is a massive um, a gap with the digital divide. Uh, so yeah, I just programmed myself to use ChatGPT like I was using Google and I realized, oh my goodness. Think of this for example, right? Because Google's main goal and their purpose, and you can extrogate like, this, um, but what, what they wanted to accomplish was a massive super AI brain, mm. right? And that's where... I don't know if you saw um, Google's AI, DeepMind beat the gentleman in chess, and then he did AlphaGo and then beat um, the best AlphaGo player, which was the hardest game in the world with borderline infinite moves. Mm -hmm. um, beat him outright. Right, I think I so, see that. What was the... What, yeah. yeah. So Google's main goal was that's why they act, Google asked you all those questions, right? Or that's why you had the search bar. Um, and then that's why those questions pop up from the search bar so you can refine your query. Sure. The whole time, the entire world that utilized Google was training a massive AI. Right, right. Because they yeah. took, that's all of our data in one centrally aggregated location. We use Google for everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, At the, one point. Google probably knows more about me than I know about myself. You know, it's right. Uh, it's right. Just, yeah. So now, so now think of what ChatGPT is going to do and OpenAI is going to be able to do, right? Because yeah. there's isn't yeah. just a there's just isn't a search engine. It is like a personal assistant that you know Albert Einstein meets Nikola Tesla in your right pocket. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I just hope, um, you know, as we get more and more digital and we disconnect more and more from reality, I, I hope we don't lose sight of our values and traditions as humanity, you know, and uh, kind of re retire into our little tribes more and more. It's uh, But that's we don't have enough time to have that conversation. That's a whole nother conversation, my friend. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, we could we can. Look, I think what I tell everyone is just look through history and look at every new technology that has been introduced to our civilization and then tell me uh, what happens. And then if you still want to subscribe to the older way of doing things and the old title, Norman, because we're in the constant movement, right? As a speak, as a, as a world, as a universe, which is ever expanding, nothing is stagnant. Everything is moving. Everything is dynamic. Mm -hmm. And um, it's important that when a new form of technology, especially one that's this transformative, is introduced into our society, we learn to operate or coincide with it. Um, and then that, that goes back to being left behind and all that stuff that we discussed. But yeah, I yeah think we, we just have to be careful um, relinquishing to a higher power so quickly. Um, yeah. You know, you know think... Aaron? Let me tell you, buddy. Yeah, it's a funny one. But I hear that often. And I always ask everyone if they realize that they've been a part of a cybernetic collective since the 1980s. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, just because we have progressive AI doesn't mean we lose sight of our moral values and everything. You no, know? no, not at all. Not the at computer all. computer tells us to go murder our neighbor, we're going to go do it or something, right? No. Until we want. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, I'd hope not. I'd hope not. Yeah. But, um, you know, that was one of the things that Sean Parker talked about and that Shemak Polyhapatia talked about. Yeah. Um, and they were very concerned about what they did with Facebook. And yeah. they, they felt like they have completely changed the moral fabric of our society, and they are correct. Yeah. Anything you introduce into civilization that's transformative tech mm -hmm. will change the moral fabric of society. I'm hopeful that all of the programmers um, and everyone on the, that's involved in AI ethics and putting in all the guardrails um, would put some proper guardrails in place to ensure that we don't get any recommendations from the AI to go murder our neighbors. Uh, hopefully <laughs> they did a good job. But uh, <laughs> Put those safeguards in place. All right, let's yeah. wrap up here. Just touch on your philanthropy. I know that's something you're very proud of. Um, what do you have going on in that space? Yeah, so um, the bulk of the boards that I serve on, which are now up to 45, are all focused on ways that we can edify, uh, empower, create, develop, and just uh, make our community as a whole 
um, just a, a, a much more respectable place for everyone that resides within that community or visits it. So um, a couple of examples, we are partnered with um, the Hollywood Food Coalition and we work very closely with them uh, to feed the unhoused as a team, um, specifically uh, during Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. every Thanksgiving, we would either run the operations of the um, food hall in the kitchen. Right. Or we would be serving some of the unhoused and we'd even do, you know, um, delivery service for any mm -hmm. leftover food that we'd package it and then uh, disperse it amongst all of the volunteers and put it in their cars and they'll drive around to the encampment and provide meals for the in-house. Mm -hmm. um, I also coach um, tackle football uh, mm -hmm. and mentor a lot of young men and mm -hmm. That, that's a big that's a big part of some of my community engagement um, and philanthropic efforts. Um, but most importantly, the biggest one for me was the unhoused crisis here in Los Angeles, which, you know, part, being on the board of the Los Angeles Tourism Board, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, the Hollywood Bid, has, has allowed to give me access to, to add value to that conversation. You know, like I, I was blessed enough to meet with the chief medical officer here in Los Angeles and work on Hollywood 2.0. Um, and which was an initiative that received 116 million um, state funding. And now you're seeing with the appointment of Mayor Bass, who's doing an incredible job uh, with Inside Safe, you're starting to see unhoused individuals get housing mm. um, off the streets, get re rehabilitated, um, given soft skills training and um, and placed back into the workforce. So that's, mm. that's the one that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, um, I won't rest until this unhoused crisis uh, is mitigated here in LA and then hopefully we can scale it for the rest of the country and the world. Yeah, I, I love that. So, I mean, that's really, it's such a complicated solution. You know, if it was just a factor of ha having the roof and the four walls, it'd be simpler, but it's a lot more than that. The soft skills, you know, often drug addiction and help, you know, people need help. And, um, but yeah, real estate is a big part of that as well. Having the actual housing there, the funding behind it, you know, housing's not cheap, right? And then the the uh, other services like transportation or even food and a cafeteria. So, no, I, I love um, I love that you're working on that. That's a great cause to be behind. Um, how can people connect with some of your causes or just learn more about what you're doing and and uh, help help pro progress? Yeah, yeah um, I'm, I'm easy to reach uh, as a very popular coach has been saying in the media. I'm not hard to find. Hold on, I should actually put my sunglasses on, right? The Coach Prime way? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, no, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, which is my personal last name, Vaughn Davis, or my Instagram, which is V to the second power. Uh, second is spelled out 2ND. Um, and then you can send me a direct message, um, and then I'm happy to connect with you. But uh, one of the things that we did as being a part of the board of LA Works is we created um, like a Google for philanthropic um, opportunities on LA Works' website. Wow. So you can go to LA Works' website and then whatever you feel like doing, you feel like feeding the unhoused, you feel like mentoring a young man, you feel like, or a young woman, you feel uh, like cleaning up the ocean, the beaches, whatever it is, we have all of those opportunities available on LA Works' website, which is a, an incredible, incredible uh, nonprofit. That I'm glad to be uh, on their board and, and serving with some some really remarkable leaders that are also on the board of directors. But that's actually one of the ones where we get the most philanthropic work done. Um, we've also uh, we, we we've subscribed to a program where all of our single use items are are donated, right? Okay. So your single use soap, shampoo, conditioner, et cetera. Um, some of the distressed linen and terry that we can't utilized here on property anymore. Those are also donated. Um, and they go to other countries uh, with individuals in need and or uh, the unhoused here in LA. At People's Capital Group, we help you invest in real estate. Build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the Northern New Jersey market. We wanna show you how owning real estate is attainable, even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate. Now we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth. So find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com.
Wow, that's incredible. So that's laworks.com. He, uh, it should be dot do dot com or dot org. Dot org. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. I'm sure Google will guide us when we're uh, searching. Google, Google okay. will guide you, but I'll, yeah. I'll maybe we use Chat GPT instead. Could you could? I'm I'm just an old fashioned guy. I'm gonna go right on Google, type it in. I'm just a, a simple minded folk, I suppose. Oh no, you're not, man. <laughs> you're not. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Awesome, Vaughn. Well, I really appreciate having you on the show here, man. You're, you're an inspiration. Uh, I love how you're also, you know, mentoring young men as well. That's an amazing thing to do. I, I try to do the same as well on my end. And uh, But I'll look more to your calls here. I'm going to add laworks.org to the uh, show notes also so people can click that right in the description. And um, just uh, hopefully we uh, meet up at an event in the near future. And, you sure will. Maybe I'll even come uh, stay at your hotel there and uh, try not to mess up the room, you know? Come on down anytime, buddy. You know you you always have a room here with us. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, Vaughn, stay safe, my friend. We'll talk shortly, all right? Thanks a lot. All right, buddy. Thanks so much. Have a good one. You're the man. Bye-bye.